Turner from Vanilla Puro. Welcome to our home for what is going to be a very busy extract making workshop. It's all about peaches today. Peaches, it's peach season. Uh huh. It's our peach extravaganza. Peach extravaganza. <laughs> we got to get it in because, you know, peaches are kind of the end of the summer. Um, it's the last hoorah, and then, and then we go into the fall. So um, we're excited to share three different extracts with you today. We're super excited. So a huge welcome to all of our uh, early Facebook group members from Making Vanilla Extract by Vanilla Pura. There's 120,000 of us now in that group, which is just crazy. And we see Lori and so many of you that have been with us since our very first live back in uh, like four years ago. Here we go. <laughs> Um, a, a big welcome to our new members that are joining us or our new attendees from Eventbrite. It's so good to have you with us. We hope we can kind of fill your plate or fill your cup today with some extract making information. Uh, and then to everyone else, uh, big welcome. Club B Pura members, big welcome. Thanks for just always being here with us. We love having you and uh, it's just fun to interact. So um, we're, like we always do, we're going to give away a free $25 gift card at the end of the show today to someone that's attending, but we've got just so much going on. We want to just jump right into extract making. We have seven extracts today that we're going to be playing with, three different peach extracts. Then we're changing out the strawberry and the blueberry from our last live. Cherry and blueberry. Or excuse me, cherry and blueberry, <laughs> thank you, from our last live. And then we're taste testing our pineapple and our almond extract. Yes. So it's like, holy mackerel. It's crazy. We got to go. We do have to go, but don't uh, be shy about asking questions. Yes. Um, you can type them in um, and Did can let us know what those are or let Did know that you want to ask a question and we'll pause it. We'd love to hear your voice. So please. And then you talk with each other. Tell it, you know, we'd love for you to share with each other the things that you know, and, and we would love to share that, um, you know, with some of the questions. Yeah. So it's interactive. We're just going to keep talking and talking. And Did is so very good at interrupting, and we've asked her to. So uh, Did continue to just interject when we stop to take a breath, jump in if there's any questions, because we want to make sure we uh, hear them all. And then uh, we should have a little time after the show as well to uh, just chat when the recording goes off. We, we like to chat with everyone. We should have some time today to be able to sit down. For those of you that have time and want to chat for a little bit afterwards, that's like always one of our favorite parts. Mm -hmm. It's like we get to see y'all so and have a conversation, which is fun. Mm -hmm. So we'll see many of you after the show as well. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah. Let's jump in to our three peach extracts. Okay. So why why are we doing three? I mean, let's tee it up here at the beginning. Why well, why uh, three peaches all at the same time? Because one, we're uh, we're against the clock here, right? Like peaches are only going to be in season, and we've got another change out after this to add more fresh peaches. So we're kind of running out of time just for the fresh season. And then also, I kind of wanted to kind of go through this evolution of where it starts and where you can end up. You know, it starts oh. very basic with just you know, making vanilla extracts. And then all of a sudden you're starting to think, hey, what if I put peaches in there? And then all of a sudden you're like, what about peaches and cinnamon and vanilla? And then after that, you're like caramel. And you guys know it can just go on and on and down that rabbit hole you go. <laughs> so doing all three together, uh, we thought it'd be kind of fun just to see that evolution. The other big lesson that we learned, if we could go back in time when we made our very first, I think our first extract was probably like, I think it was Madagascar and vodka for the party that you had. It was all vodkas, mm -hmm. right? Well, it, then you wait a year and then you're finally taste testing. If we could have made two or three different ones at the same time, then in a year you're taste testing more things. So they take so long to make anytime you're making one. So if you know you're going to do peaches, think maybe there's three different versions of peaches that you want to do at the same time. So when it's taste test time, you can compare and contrast and zero in on the ones that you like the most, which, and this is the last thing I'll say, this is the reason it's so fun to make extracts with friends, mm -hmm. because then you can each sort of pick a different one and you get together to make them. And then you can all get together again when you have like your taste test party and, taste and you yeah. can all vote like, who's do I like more? Do I like this one with cinnamon or this one with caramel or this one with nothing and just vanilla? You can try all these different things. So that's where extract making gets really, really fun. So we always vote, say, start with multiple so you can do multiple. And if you don't want to make three yourself, invite a couple of your friends over and everybody make a different one. And then you have a party in a month or in a year when everybody's done. So yeah. that's that's our two bits on why we're doing three all at the same time, because this is what you should do. Have fun. Make yeah. a few. So let's dive into our very first one. This is on page 125 of our book, The Art of Extract Making. This is just the basic peach vanilla extract, correct? Yeah, just peaches and vanilla. 
Love it. Okay, so we're again, we're going to start with, in this recipe, we picked the Hawaiian vanilla bean. It is a wonderful fruity uh, vanilla bean. It kind of smells like um, mangoes and guava, just kind of that tropical fruit smell. And then it tastes like, it's very fruity and sweet, maybe just a hint of cacao, just very, a hint, not too much, but very sweet and very fruity, which will be a wonderful accent to the peaches. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, slice down the middle. I just want to get all of those seeds in um, my extract. Now, this is a peach forward extract, meaning that I, these vanilla beans, this is half an ounce we're going to do, and I measured that before. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, the peaches are really what you're tasting. And then the vanilla is more of a binding creaminess that you're adding into this peach uh, extract. Yes. So, but this is going to be a peach forward one. I'm sorry. I was a little distracted for a minute because I read the comments from our uh, students today. And they're talking <laughs> about how they have bad hair days on live days. It's like, <laughs> okay, class, it's time to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Bam blown off right now. Know. We got a wild flash today, but anyway, yes, we we've been there too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got you off track. I was just laughing over there when did turned on the big camera. I thought we were going to be on the extract cam for a minute, and I'm over here laughing at the comments because everybody's <laughs> talking about bad hair day. Hilarious. Okay, keep going. So, so I sliced the vanilla down the center and then I just chopped them into small pieces because um, there is only going to be about eight ounces of Everclear in here. And so I need to make sure that it's going to be submerged. So I want to make them small at the bottom. And I love to see all of those seeds in my extract. So we are going to just um, open them up. Um, I've got uh, three and I've already pre-cut the peaches, but um, I want you to see what I what a medium peach is to me. You know, that is pretty subjective, right? Um, it's about eight ounces, um, but this is this is the medium peach. It fits in the, the palm of my hand. It's not a huge peach that sometimes you see in the store that are like, you know, they're as big as two hands. This is just something you get off a tree in your neighborhood. Um, and there's three of these. And um, I went ahead and peeled these um, ahead of time. And it ended up being about eight ounces. So that can kind of give you an idea if you're wondering, you know, oh, you know, I've got these peaches, how much am I going to put in there? Yeah, you know, as we were first starting our extracting experience, not everyone had food scales and things like that. And so we were all about quantity. But for those of you that have really gone down the rabbit hole, you've got your scales now and you can weigh it out where you want eight ounces of peaches. And that's the, so if you have a big peach and you're wondering how much, it's eight ounces. For those of you that don't have a food scale, it's it's about three peaches that size. We did the same thing with the oranges just to try to keep it simple. So you needed minimal equipment in your kitchen. It's about three. We've done a few and we get the eight ounces, right? Yeah. And then also um, we cut and peel uh, the skin off of um, the peaches. Um, you know, the peel can add some off-putting taste. So we just leave the peels off. Um, and something that I do to peel them quickly is I just blanch them for like 30, 40 seconds in boiling water, pull them out, and the skin comes off like butter. Mm -hmm. It takes like seconds, and I'm not here trying to get the skin off, and it just comes, it's very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you do that when you um, are making like peach jams and things, and you know that's what I did when I extract, use the extracts, is that I just you know, put them, put them in some water for uh, boiling water for just 30, 40 seconds, comes right off, makes it easy. Okay, I'm going to push down. I want to make sure that this is kind of as low as I can get it because- And I'm you're pushing all the juice getting... out as well, right? Like, let's get all that fluid out and, you know. Not all of it, but as much you know, as it's not going to hurt it, right? Yep. Okay, now we are going to put eight ounces of Everclear, which is 190 proof. We've got to use a higher proof alcohol because we're adding fresh fruit in, which is, you know, peaches are 89% uh, water. And so there's going to be some dilution there. And we have to take into account uh, the water, um, you know, the dilution from the peaches. So that's why we're going up to 190 proof. 
Yep, you got it. So, you know, if you're ever wondering what the moisture content is of your fresh fruit, you can Google it. What's the moisture content of peaches? In the case of peaches, the, on average, they're 89%, which actually is um, a lot, it's less moisture content than you get like with a lot of berries, you know, that are upwards of even 95%. So you get a lot of peach and fresh peaches, which is really good. And so you get more of that flavor to come out. So you're adding the eight ounces of Everclear. Yeah, look how beautiful the color is. Just love how pretty that is. This is one of our, we're going so fast. We're not talking about like the aesthetic as much, but this is one of my favorites. I know I say that about all of them, but the peach extract, I, I, it's one of those where I remember the day years ago when Jill came in with the first finished peach and we did the taste test and it was amazing. It's kind of like the orange one where it's like, oh, I remember those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, peach is wonderful. Well, and I do a blind taste test. I come in with a little shot glass, you know, and a little milk. And I'm like, try this. He's like, what is it? I'm not telling you. Just try it. And then he has to tell me what he's tasting. <laughs> yeah. Peach is a fun one. So for us, we we get peach time is exciting to us. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So now you need to put on your labeling because you need to know um, what it is that you, um, what you've made. I always put the date that I started on the bottom and um, and then my peach vanilla, I put the page number so it's just easy to find. Now in one month, I'm going to take these peaches out. I'm gonna drain all the liquid out of it. I'm gonna put the vanilla back in with the, with the alcohol and then I'm gonna put only four ounces of peaches back in. I, that's all I can do. If I put more than that in, it will go below that 35 to 50 percent um, alcohol range that you need for extracts. Um, and then you'll just have flavored um, alcohol, which, I mean, you can use that for cocktails and things. So sure, it's more of a liqueur at that point. <laughs> yeah. Connie yeah. just made the uh, comment that every extract is her favorite extract when she's using it. And Lori made the comment that the peach extract, you put a couple drops in your uh, iced tea. Uh, yes, Lori, that's exactly it. Yeah, that for on a awesome. hot summer day, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But oh, um, gelatos, that. ice yeah. creams, um, any types of creams, creams, the, the word cream is an important word in, in extract making because when you want it to be like extract flavor forward, uh, almost any of the cream things that you're making, ice cream, cream pies, custards, those kinds of things, frosting. frostings, like that's when the extract comes forward because you can use extract a little more liberally. Uh, in those moments. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, anything cream is fun. Yeah. These are fun, yeah. all fun. Mm -hmm. So I think summertime a lot. Yeah. And this is a great way um, when it's like harvest season, right? It's peach time. Um, a lot of people are canning right now and making jams and jellies. You got to add extract to that lineup because you can preserve these flavors and use them in a totally different way. The same way you're getting your jams or jellies uh, and your canned peaches set some aside and make extracts with them. So you've got that flavor that you can use for other applications as well, right? Well, set some of your vanilla beans aside and put those in with your uh, canned uh, peaches, or I love putting it in my um, peach raspberry jam. Ooh. I add a vanilla in there yes. and it is delicious. Yes. I make it every other year. My family, they're snobs with jam. I don't, when's the last time you had store-bought jam? We, we don't, no, <laughs> because the the peach raspberry vanilla jam is, it's it's out of this world. It's it's a whole other level. Yes. I'm sure the Smuckers family's really nice and I feel bad for saying that, but oh my gosh, it's like a whole other level of jam. So. I love peanut butter and jelly over here. We, we do, we do. So there you go. That is a super easy peach. What's easy? Easy, so right? Starts, yep. right okay let's take it one step further so let's move so this is page 128 our peach of uh making vanilla extract by vanilla pura our peach spice extract yeah so nice. and i say that for video editing so they know where to cut the video and where to start the video so our next segment here we go our peach spice vanilla extract okay so it's the exact same amount of peaches the three medium peaches that are about the size of you know the palm of your hand um, about eight ounces. Um, and then we, this time we're picking an entire ounce of Mexican beans. Mexican beans already kind of have like a, a spice to them, a little bit of a cinnamon, 
um, and then kind of a cacao. So yeah. you're already kind of getting a spice with the vanilla beans, the Mexican vanilla beans. And then we're going to add uh, one ounce of the um, Ceylon cinnamon. Uh, yep. not one, one stick. Ounce, sorry, one stick. Yep. Yes. So um, we same thing. We are going to just slice them down the middle. So Ooh. while she's doing that, oh, oh, I know the Mexican beans. So the reason that we do the different beans throughout the book is we just want to make sure that when you're choosing your vanilla beans, that you're doing it deliberately, that there's this whole other uh, flavor note that you can get based on the beans that you choose. We've selected some of our favorites, but again, our book is all about ideas and then building on the ideas. So all we're trying to show by using three different vanilla beans with three different peach extracts is that vanilla beans are a big part of the extract making process. Don't just go with the first ones you find. Think about it. Find a fun bean that you think will marry up well. So since this one had cinnamon, we do this quite a bit. Anytime we're doing something like with cinnamon where we're getting that spice, we like using Mexican vanilla beans because of their like, like they have that little vanilla kick at the end. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason we chose it. But uh, there's a million other vanilla options out there that, um, you know, can be great for you as well. Pick the ones you like the most. Whatever you think will marry up well. So I'm just slicing these down the middle again. I'm cutting them with scissors this time. You can cut them with knives, scissors, uh, seamer purse, whatever you have on hand. Um, I know you guys um, have all kinds of great um, different ways that you do this. So I wanna make them again, small on the bottom because I need it all to be submerged in the Everclear. I am going to um, kind of break this up into a, Wow, I love when I, I just, I love doing that. <laughs> we can't not do like anymore. anything until you crack it in half. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow. It's magic. That is the Ceylon cinnamon is just remarkable. So I'm, I, there was no cinnamon smell in the kitchen at all. And now it's like, oh, this whole area smells like cinnamon after you crack those open. Just, so fun. That into, you know, small pieces. Cause again, it needs to be submerged in that alcohol. So, um, and we'll strain it out um, when we're when we're done. Okay. Um, just, I'm adding uh, just a couple of comments that I think are really helpful. Yeah. Nancy uh, says vanilla sugar and canned peaches is wonderful. Yes, just to add that vanilla kick for sure. Um, peach extract with Cheerios, milk, and sugar. That's a new one. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. I mean, how, I mean, you're making plain Cheerios that good. Yeah, Roxanne Young said that. I love it, Roxanne. And then Jeanette says custards. Yes, custards, custards with peach yes. would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, I'm glad. I, I want to hear what everybody is saying and I can't. So we've measured it. We just added the yeah, eight yeah. ounces of peaches. Uh, eight, three medium, which is about eight ounces. Yep. Yes. And then again, I'm just going to push this down. And you're using the right end of the muddler now because I said it. Exactly. He's picky. <laughs> Oops, let's straighten that out a little bit. Oh. All right. There we go. So, so I pushed it down because again, I want to make sure that I have plenty of room for my Everclear. But but let's, well, we got to talk for a minute because this is the one where the recipe calls for high proof rum. Oh, yes. So okay, this is a little bit of a, a, a detour. This is a detour. So the reason we you wanted a high proof rum for this one is the cinnamon with a spiced rum. Uh, it's amazing. And, and that is what we recommend. But as you'll see in the book, it calls for a 160 proof, which is 80% alcohol high proof rum. And because peaches uh, are at about an 89% moisture content, if you start with a 160 proof high proof rum, you can still do the change out halfway and you'll still end up being above that 35% alcohol content after the second change out. But we had a problem here in, in Utah. So when we did the book, we had high proof rum. It was uh, what I wrote the name down, Stroh's, S-T-R-O-H. And it's the 160 proof, which is 80% alcohol, that we would recommend using. We can't find high proof rum right now in Utah. We've searched all over the place. We can't find it. We're going to have to call family members in Arizona or someone to yeah, see my, if we can get it brought. Someone's got to bootleg it into yeah, us. My sisters are good about doing that for me. <laughs> yes. The only thing we can find, and we brought it here just so you could see, is we have a plantation rum, and it's also overproof, but it's a 69%, which is only 69% alcohol, which is 138 proof, which wouldn't be enough to do the second change out. If you wanted to use this, you could do one round of peaches, 
but you're not going to be able to do to do the two like we would normally recommend. So you're not going to have as much of a peach taste when you're done. So we had this discussion, like, do we go ahead and move forward with the 138 proof and not do a change out? Or should we use an Everclear and be able to still change it out the way we want to do? This is sort of the dance you have to do when you can't get, you know, some of these a little more rare ingredient, right? Well, and I know there are a lot of states that just don't have the overproof. I have friends in California and they can't get Everclear at 190 proof. And so, you know, if that's you and your state doesn't allow that, you don't have a sister bootlegging up to your house every so often, um, then you have some other options. Um, you can do freeze dry fruit and then just use regular vodka or rum or bourbon or whatever your spirit of choice is. You can just go freeze dried, or um, if you can get like a 160 Everclear, um, then you can do one change out. So, you know, we kind of wanted to be able to address uh, this issue of, you know, can you even get, um, you know, overproof from that high or overproof, you know, Everclear, because some people can't. And so we want you to know what your options are. Yeah, we, we hadn't planned this. It, it was just kind of a snafu that we had when we were getting the spirits together for the live today that we, it was just no longer available. We didn't have any in the state when it was time to, uh, to get them. So in, in our case, what we're doing is this, and let me kind of reiterate, because I think it's a really important point. Say that you wanted to do the spice rum, you could still do like the 138 proof spice rum. You could add the fresh peaches, but then when it's time in a month to change out the fresh peaches, instead of putting fresh back in, if you want a more peach taste, you would have to add uh, like a freeze dried peach back in. And you'd let those go until you got the taste that you want, but you can't really add any more peaches with um, moisture content. Fresh peach. Right, fresh peach. That's what I'm saying. So you got to use like a freeze dried, a dried peach. And then you could still get the taste of the spice rum, You'd have to use dried to kind of top it off until you get the flavor that you want, but you would still get there. Well, that was such a detour from the recipe in our book. We, we might do that one later because I think that would be a great live just to show how to make it. But uh, our book calls for the change out uh, in one month when we look kind of like we're going to do with the cherries and the blueberries today. And so we wanted to stick with the change out. So we're going, we're calling an audible. We would love to use the spice rum. If we had the 160 proof spice rum, it is better. There's, it's so it good, so good. <laughs> but we just don't have it. And so we're going to go ahead and use Everclear. It's still fantastic with the Everclear because you're getting the cinnamon um, plus the peaches plus the vanilla. Um, if you want more of a spicy kick with the Everclear, you can always add another cinnamon stick. Um, you could go really creative and add maybe a little star anise or something like Plus. that, just to give it more of kind of a spice rum flavor with the use of dry ingredients. So there are things you can do to sort of mimic that spice rum, but um, you just don't have the spice rum to do it. Yeah. So we wish we had it because it's our favorite with spice rum, um, but it's going to be fantastic with Everclear. But we might add an extra cinnamon stick when we do our taste test. We might, you know, do some other things just to make it a little spicier since we didn't use the rum. Just we just want to get your um, brain going. You know what? What other what other things can you do if you don't have the option of such a high proof alcohol? You do have other options. Yeah, we were surprised. We kind of got we're like, oh no, what do we do? And that's what we concluded. We're going to stick with the change out. We're going to stick with the high proof spirit. We wish we had spice rum. We just don't this time because we can't get it. Again, just to repeat, the, the one that we like is called, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, Stro. It's S-T-R-O-H. It's an 80% ABV, so it's 160 proof. Works wonderful for peach extract. Um, so if it's available in your state, grab it. Or if you can buy it online and ship to your state, which I think there's like 13, 14 states that allow for shipping, um, grab it because it's really, really good. Or if you have a sister who can get it, Try that too, or try. Or, or <laughs> use a 135 or a 138 proof spiced rum and just add dried peaches uh, to get the flavor you want at the end. Um, there's lots of ways to arrive at the same point. Yep. There you go. Okay. A little troubleshooting uh, segment there. Here we go. So we've got our second peach. I just kind of like to shake that up. Oh, put it under the camera. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe you already did. But it's beautiful. Oh, it's under you everything. See all of the cinnamon and the vanilla and then the peaches on top. There you go. Um, you know what I like to do? You, if you want, you can put like this fermentation weight on the top. I think it's doing okay right now. Once the fruit starts to absorb all of the alcohol, it will settle. 
but um, check on it ever so often. You, if you feel like it, you, you need to push it down, go in. You can push it down with a muddle or whatever, or you can get one of these fermentation weights and push it down with that. Those, those are some options. Yep. So there we go. Peach extract number two. So now moving on, peach extract number three, uh, page 126 in the Art of Extract Making, our, our third peach extract in our workshop today. This one was us going a little crazy one day, <laughs> right? Because we, we saw some things online and this one kind of uh, blends both the concept of an extract plus the concept of an infusion into one extract. So in our book, we write about this. There's there's tinctures, there's infusions, there's emulsions, there's extract. There's all these things that are extract-like. Um, we use the term extract for all of our extracts because in, in every extract that we make, we're extracting. But this is one that blends an infusion with an extract uh, together. We still call it an extract, but it's a lot of fun and it's with uh, tastes that are totally different. And we also, uh, this is one of those examples where we're going to show you one of our failures. The the what happens if, if we don't do everything on time, because we had a failure with this one that was, we we like to show. In fact, yeah. people have seen the picture where it's kind of like in the background and they can see this jar that's all coagulated. They're like, what is that? We're going to show you today. This is the failure that we had. <laughs> but let's go ahead and okay. make the extract. Um, this also has, of course, we're starting with vanilla, but this is our um, Camaros uh, vanilla bean. And this has a very creamy, you know, like Madagascar, that normal creamy classic. But then in addition to that, there's this um, caramely, marshmallowy, um, like, aspect to it don't you think yes comoros is this so island different. So yeah when you look at a map you've got madagascar down at the bottom of uh off to the when you're looking at the map it's off to the right of africa and then there's this tiny little island right between madagascar and the continent there of africa the main continent and that's comoros and it's this tiny little tropical beautiful island and that's where these beans come from and so like jill said they're in the same sort of region as madagascar same climate but there's something about the soils in Comoros. They're they're a favorite bean because they have like a marshmallowy like undertone, like a like a very sweet richness. Yeah, you know, just uh, it's it's very unique. Very unique. So we thought with the mixture of peaches and caramel, the sweetness of caramel that we'll be adding, um, we thought a Comoros bean would be a lot of fun for this one. That's why we recommended it. So so we are going to start with one ounce of the Comoros beans. Same thing. I'm just slicing down the middle and then I'm going to um, cut them in three so they fit really nicely. Um, with this extract, it really does matter that you um, cut your peaches kind of a little smaller because, um, you know, we've got the caramel in there as well as the peaches and um, the vanilla. The so, beans we're referring to. We want to cut the beans into smaller pieces. And the peaches as and well. And the peaches as well. You just kind of want everybody, everything to settle down in that Um, Because there's a whole lot jar. going on in this. And then I still only have eight ounces of Everclear. So I am just cutting these. And you can smell the beans come through. They're wonderful. Comoros is one of those places that... Mm. One of these yeah, days, we're going to have to get to think they s'mores. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Okay, so the ounce of beans. So, uh, you know, as a rule of thumb, anytime we're using an ounce, we're trying to get the vanilla to come forward a little bit more, which means if you leave it, you know, and don't use it for up to a year, you've got enough vanilla in there to make like a single uh, a single full vanilla extract. Um, our, our recipe only calls for six months because we think it's vanilla forward enough at that point, but you can wait even longer if you want to well, wait longer. Course, we always put the vanilla beans back in. Um, when we're finished, we take out the um, um, the peaches and we'll leave the vanilla in there just a little bit longer just to give it a little bit more of a, um, you know, time to extract with those um, vanilla oils. Yeah. Not, not to distract, I'm just, how you know that something's extracting, I'm looking at the very first one we made just 15 minutes ago, and we're already getting that amber color uh, around the peaches uh, at the bottom, which is interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, just like that, you know, it's a, it's going to be a fun extract. See you that? can kind of see it, but we're already getting the amber come out, which just, is it's fun so to see. Quick how just a little bit, but that's a telltale. And the reason I bring that up, we had a, a super sweet lady post in our Facebook group. Um, I think it was just this week. And she posted a picture of like a one-year-old extract. And a lot of you probably saw it. 
and it had, um, you know, I think it had the right amount of beans, but it, it hadn't turned color yet. And she had put it all the beans in the 190 proof Everclear. And she waited a year. And of course, it didn't turn out. The beans just got burned. But one of the telltale signs is you don't start getting that amber color. And so uh, that's why the moisture content from the fresh fruit is so important to dilute the Everclear. When it's diluted, you start getting an extract right away. You'll start seeing the amber. You don't see the amber. That's kind of a telltale sign that maybe something's a little bit yeah, off. Yeah, if it doesn't, if you don't see change pretty quickly, something something's off. Something's off. Okay, so we added the beans. We yeah, added, we added the, peaches. the peaches on top of the beans. I did use my hands because I washed them, and this is my kitchen. So uh, Ladon <laughs> Ladon posted that the Stroh's rum, the 160 rum, it's available at Binnie's in uh, Illinois. So it looks like, yep, some people are finding it. So that's great. And then a lot of people saying Camaros are so fun. One of our favorites. They are. We Camaros just make a smile. I don't know what it is, but Camaros is a special bean. Well, it's very unique. Yes. I mean, marshmallows. I would, if you would have told me five years ago that you're going to smell and kind of get a marshmallowy taste from a vanilla bean, I'd been like, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. No, Camaros is a fun one. Yeah. Okay. So we're kind okay, of so taking the journey. Now, the, the last thing is we have um, all of these um, caramel squares. And I, um, you know, they come individually wrapped. You find them in the baking area or the candy area. People use them to make caramel apples and, and all kinds of things, cookies. Um, yeah, it's about five ounces is what you want. And it's about 15 squares is, is what you're going to find. And I'm just going to drop these in. Um, I know that some people have used Werther's. Yes. Um, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to dissolve. Yeah. Either way. Um, you know, I just, this is more of the infusion part, right? The idea is that we're going to add alcohol to these things. They're not going to, obviously we're not extracting the caramel square. We're dissolving it. We're infusing it into the alcohol solution to get the caramel flavor. So were there's some people separate from this, they use like those mint um, candies at Christmas time and they'll make like a, a peppermint extract, oh. a peppermint infusion, okay. things like that. I mean, there's so many different things like this, this whole thing that we're doing with the candies opens up a whole other room to the rabbit hole of different infusions that you can create to have mint flavors and cinnamon, like people I've seen, uh, the what do you call the cinnamon? The little red cinnamon candies. What are they called? Red Hots. Red Hots. Um, yeah, I've seen people use Red Hots. So there's all sorts of things. So it's a whole other world. We're going to stick just with the caramel here, but, but this, this is an infusion that's right? going into an extract. We started with something very basic. You know, we always start with vanilla and then, we, you know, add a fruit and then, oh, maybe let's add a dried ingredient. It's an option. <laughs> just say it, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, so we're adding eight ounces of Everclear. And we're going to wait a month and then we're going to um, add another four ounces of peaches into that. Um, the thing about this is it's going to look really gross because it's going to <laughs> dissolve into something that looks like this. Well, not exactly right? like this. We need to explain what that yeah. one is. It's going to look very coagulated and kind of, kind of, you know, kind of gross. You're like, what is that going to turn out? That doesn't even look like an extract, but this is finished product right here and it's pretty clear um it look at the color of that that is beautiful and it is so so clear um and you know you're gonna go from this to this but but we need to state as well that this one well that's yeah, I'm the, getting there. You're getting there because it's not going to look exactly like this. Oh, it, well, the color is. It's but going to it's be going to turn that color, yeah. Coagulated. But this one, I forgot about it. Yes. I um, It had been in there, I don't know, two and a half months, and I forgot about it. And then I went to pull it out, and it's almost completely solidified. Um, if I pull this out, I might get an ounce mm -hmm. out of here. So this is the one thing that I would tell you that in a month, you, you need to take out the caramel because it's going to absorb more alcohol than you're going to get out. Yep. It'll coagulate. So, it'll interact. It becomes thick. And so it's one that you need to be watching. And when it's done correctly, uh, again, just to show you the that finish. amber color. Um, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. It's one of and our- And it tastes- Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's caramel and peaches, right? Like yeah. it's absolutely 
a beautiful extract. And so, um, but you need to keep an eye on it because you've now introduced sugars and you've introduced other things into the extract that can have a different response to just the fruit and the beans. So this is one that you want to watch when you see it coagulating. It takes about a month that, well, a month is what we say uh, that we do is and at that point you filter it, pour it through the coffee filter and we'll show you when we do that. We'll be doing that in a month. Yes. That's and, what I'm getting you know, to. To get it that pure and clean, you've got to, you've got to use a, a coffee filter. Um, but you know, uh, extracts in general, if, if you've forgotten your cherries are in there a little bit longer, you're going to be okay. It's just not going to do anything. It's not going to rot. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're not going to get any more flavor. You're just wasting time. Right. And it'll be okay. But with the caramel, um, you know, you, you won't be okay because you won't have any alcohol left. So this is one extract where I would say you really need to keep on track of where you're at. So, um, you know, you don't lose all your alcohol. Yep. So we wanted to show you that the, we messed up and we've, we've messed up a lot. Well, you know, I, I keep it just yeah. to remind myself that, you know, this is an experiment and, um, I didn't know that, you know, if I left, I was thinking the more caramel, the better, right. Yeah. But nope, not always. And that's why we do these workshops to talk about successes and failures. So you don't make the same ones. That's the idea. Yeah. And so we've showed you the worst case and then we've shown you what it will be like when, when we're done. Yeah. So, so this will be a fun one to watch. You can't feed that lid. I yeah. fell in the sink there. Just a couple of questions. Yes. Finishing up there. Um, Jeanette says, can you use word as hard candies instead? And what can you do with the caramels? Do you just eat boozy, boozy caramels? Or anything <laughs> you can do with those? I think it's um, the, the default that everyone is always like, can we eat them? Can we drink them? <laughs> Can we? And sure. You, can, uh, you can't. Um, you're tall. You're tall. No, you can't. Um, but no, the the it, they won't be really eatable when we uh, put them out, right? If they're messy. In fact, I'm the consistency even. of it is kind of um, it just doesn't. It, it's kind of like grainy a little bit. It's not smooth. And so I it just the texture of it would be off. And then you have to remember that it's ever clear that's in there and this is you know, really important right here it is everclear is so strong it you know I, I when we make like liqueurs and things um we don't normally put it in everclear we'll put it in like you know vodka or something a little bit more um mild that's about 40 percent and then you can eat your cherries and your blueberries and your peaches you know boozy fruit and and or a rum pop that you've created with all the different layers um, but when you're using Everclear, and I'm not going to say this is a hard, fast rule, because if you like it, you, you, like it. you, you know, you try it and it. let us know again, we're like, we always say like, we're, we're just a couple of years ahead of most people. Like we've been doing this for a long time. And the whole point of the workshops is to learn new things, make new mistakes, discover new things and share best practices. So we all get better together. So we're all kind of on this learning journey and I'm reading all these comments. Someone's like, uh, I bet that boozy caramel would taste good on ice cream or in a milkshake. It could uh, put them in marshmallows for s'mores like it could. But um, like Jill was saying, um, it, uh, boozy fruit or boozy nuts like Starlet has like the whole boozy nuts thing. Those things are, are very good after uh, an extract in regular alcohol, like you're saying. Um, it, it'll surprise you how potent the Everclear is in the leftovers when you use Everclear. Everclear is really strong alcohol. So uh, I would suspect, and we'll we'll find out in a month. So stay tuned and come back and join us in a month when we do the change out. But uh, as, as we know that the alcohol that is inside of that caramel when you bring it out, it's not like your typical boozy uh, fruit. Um, in fact, by the way, if you go to our Facebook group, someone just posted um, uh, uh, last week, I think it was, maybe it was this week, uh, oh, cherries. last week, and we had so many, and there's like 200 comments. Right, it was on, on cherries, and everyone's like, oh, boozy cherries, but she, because they look beautiful, in fact, maybe we just, we're going to table that, because we're going to have that exact same yeah. moment when we do the change yeah. after. So we'll table that, we'll come back to it, but the point that will, the conclusion will be is that Everclear is not like regular rum, regular vodka, regular bourbon, where you can have boozy nuts or boozy fruit. It is really, really potent. And that potency is going to come through. So you'd really have to like dip stuff in sugar and then dip Make it sugar. in chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, and then you'll have to do a lot to disguise that alcohol taste. Yes. That's the idea. Okay. Dick, would you mind just kind of 
putting it uh, close up here. I just want to show the different, just like that, you guys. This, this took, I don't know, like 30-ish minute with you mm -hmm. know, Paul talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you. Uh. <laughs> oh, but look, all three. You know, we've got our peach vanilla, which is super, super basic. Then we got kind of the mid-grade where we were peach vanilla and then cinnamon. Maybe add some other spices, what you like. Um, and then we have, you know, the caramel and, you know, we kind of have this infusion. And so, you know, when we're done with this, my goodness, we're going to have um, all kinds of fun, different taste tests to do all with the peaches. All with the peaches. So three extracts at one time. So it's a good example of peaches are in season, make a bunch of peach extracts. Strawberries are in season, cherries are in season, blueberries in season, whatever's in season, make a few, try different things, yeah. have fun with it like we have, and then we'll check in next month on all three of them. We'll see how they're coming along. Yeah, if you're already a canner or jammer, just get a few extra peaches and let's just get extracting all at the same time too. Jessica just said, I had an Everclear soaked cherry from an extract recently. Oof, never again. Ever Everclear strong. So it's not like just a boozy fruit. So you really got to be careful. And if you're you're determined to use that cherry or that whatever, you're really going to have to dilute and disguise that taste of alcohol through lots of sugars, chocolates, things like that to kind of make it go away. Because Everclear is not a sipping drink. No, I really wanted it to work because it looked delicious, but yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same as bourbon and cherries. <laughs> yep. So, um, so there we go. There's our peach. So now let's go back. A month ago, we made a uh, cherry and blueberry extract. So we're now going to do our one month change out yep. of our fresh cherry extract from page 108 in the Art of Extract Making. Um, and this will sort of tee up the discussion as well about uh, boozy cherries again with Everclear. So we'll talk about it a little more because it was cherries specifically that was mentioned in our Facebook group. Um, yep. of whether you can eat them or use them as a treat once you've extracted them. Yeah. But let's go back and let's just start from the beginning here. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, you know, we started this uh, last month on the 23rd and, um, you know, it we started it with eight ounces of cherries and now it's time to um, get rid of some of the cherries, uh, get rid of the cherries, um, get all of the alcohol out, um, put the vanilla and the extract back and then add four more ounces of cherries. Um, you know, and again, I, I feel like, you know, we're at the end of summer. It was so hard to find, not as easy as it was a month ago to find cherries today. So, you know, if you're interested in these things, um, maybe you plan out, okay, next year, I am going to make cherries and, and, you know, you plan ahead of when, when they're in season, you know, if you have your own tree, tree, even better, right? I wish I had a cherry tree. I do not. <laughs> no. Okay. My goodness. Look at that purple color. Okay. I'm just going to put this into my French press. Oh, that purple. Uh, look at the color. It's gorgeous. Isn't that amazing? We've got the vanilla beans that are in the bottom. I, yeah. These were Tongan beans, as I recall. Yep, yeah, Tongan beans. Use the French press. And I wish we could turn the camera sideways a little bit so you could see it. It's kind of hard to see it. But um, anyway, you, if you know how the French press works, we're just pushing everything down uh, underneath. And it's a great way to get all the juice out of the cherries uh, and make sure that you're getting uh, everything out that we can get out. And I learned this from, uh, you know, one of our friends. I know many of our experts on our group on Facebook use the French press, and that's where I got the idea. Yep. Now, we always kind of rush it for the shows here. Just we don't have enough time, but you can there, there's a lot of fluid still left in these beans and you know you can put them in a strainer and you can just let it sit for an hour or so and let it drip you can take then the muddle while it's sitting in the strainer and you can push everything out to get as much of that alcohol as we can for the sake of time we move pretty quick here we're leaving some fluid in there um she's using the long tweezers now to pull out all the vanilla bean pieces um, you know, and there's lots of ways to do that. Uh, it's, we may have to just pour it into the strainer, but you're going to use that yeah. for the pineapple, right? Yeah. So, okay. Now I'm going to add, uh, four ounces of new cherries. These have been pitted. Uh, I pitted them. Thank you very much. You did. After, if you were here for the last month's show, you'll recall that we had cherry pits all over the kitchen. 
We had some hit the window. Uh, <laughs> I was the pitter this time. And uh, I'm pleased to say that only one of them got away from me. And I went all over the back side of the cabinet right here. I told them, I'm like, um, they're a little bit messy. So, you know, just so you know, it's, you know, you're going to have to clean that off. Yep. And so all we did is we started, as you'll recall, with eight ounces of fresh cherries in the Everclear with the Tongan vanilla beans. And now we've pulled out the eight ounces of fresh. It's been a month. And we've added now half the amount, four ounces. And so going eight ounces of fresh and then four ounces of fresh, that'll get our finished alcohol content right above. We've done the math. It's going to be right above like 38% on this one when you look at the moisture content of cherries. And so that's the reason that when you're doing the change out, it's really important. You go half the amount the second time because you'll get under that 35% and it won't extract the way that you like it. Again, that sweet spot for extracts. 35 on the low end and 50 on the high. Yeah. And so let's pull out one of those cherries, maybe hold it under the camera. So this is the temptation, right? Um, we'll get a close up here. So you can see. It does look delicious. Doesn't it look I delicious? I put it in my mouth, but I already know how it tastes. It looks beautiful, but it's, again, it's ever clear. And so it is so boozy and so strong. So, um, you know, if you're like determined to use those for some sort of treat, we would love to hear what you find. I got to believe that you're going to have to add a whole bunch of sugar and a whole bunch of chocolate to really like mellow out the taste of that alcohol. Yeah. So for the sake of time, we went quick. We're going to pick out the rest of the vanilla beans in the French press a little bit later. But um, just to show you how it works, all the fluids in there, because this is fresh, a lot of times with the dried fruits, it'll absorb the alcohol. And then when you're done, you have less than the eight ounces. And sometimes you've got to top off. With fresh, you'd seldom have that problem. Um, you've got so much juice from the fresh plus the Everclear that uh, you're able to get all that, that fluid out. And now we're changed out. So that's change out number one for and then, cherry extract. And then we wait another month, um, put it in the cupboard. Um, and then uh, we'll take the cherries out and we'll do a little taste test. Yep. The smell, we moved pretty quickly, but the smell uh, that you saw how red the water has become, Everclear is clear, and you saw how red that is. So one, the cherry uh, flavoring is all coming out of the cherries. It's beautiful. There's still a boozy smell, but certainly the cherry was coming through. It'll be much more cherry uh, when we're done here. It and then like a red wine. That yes. It, it absolutely, Did yeah, it, it yeah. looks like a red wine. It's a beautiful color. But that's actually a question. I mean, you're always, again, extract, the number one ingredient in every extract is, well, it's water. The number two ingredient is alcohol. Uh, per FDA, uh, extracts 35% alcohol. So everyone's always like, I still smell some booze in my extract. Well, you always will because um, the alcohol's the behind water. The alcohol is the number two ingredient. So the, the, the booze is always present. You're always going to get it but the flavor comes through then when you do the baking. That's why when we taste test, we do it in milk. Yes. And we use the mediums. It's going to always taste like, it's not supposed to taste good. There's not sugar in there, yep. added sugar. There is, you know, just from the fruit juice. Yep. That's the sugar you're going to get. So exactly. It tastes good on its own. Hey, I'm getting lots of compliments for being a good uh, cherry deep hitter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy and Roxanne. Thank you. I worked very hard to not have a pit fly across, but I still made a mess. <laughs> it is what it is. In fact, I'm looking at our kitchen rug right here and, and right where I'm standing, there's a nice big red stain on the rug. So <laughs> I, I'll be doing the laundry. It's my fault. No. Um, anyway, so there's our first change out from our fresh cherry. We'll be taste testing it in our next live, right? All these extracts are building on each other. And so it's like the list gets longer and longer of everything we've got to do. We actually are going to have a, a couple less next time. We have a little breather because we have some 12 yeah. members that we're waiting for. When you, you kind of get behind the eight ball when uh, the fresh fruits come into season and you either get on board or that passes you by. And so that's why there's so many now because, you know, we had to get the cherries and the blueberries and, and now peaches are going to be, we've got, you know, peaches are in, but in a month they'll be gone. And so, you know, in the summer, it gets a little bit busy with these um, fruit extracts. Same thing with the citrus in the winter. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be doing more orange. We've got grapefruit that we still got to do. So that'll happen then as well. So, but it's kind of fun all year long. You have, um, something to look forward, something different. And then, you know, in the winter when there isn't a lot, then we do like spiced and nuts and of course, all the different kinds of vanilla, right? And the different spirits with those. So 
really extracting can keep you busy all year long. All year long. And it's true. In the winter, it seems like we play with spirits a lot more frequently with the vanilla and the spice. We add coffee and we add, you uh -huh. know, nothing. all those winter all flavors. These, like, Start playing with different bourbons and different rums, things that kind of like are cohesive with what we're making it in wintertime. And cacao, you know, yeah. you can get that year round. And yeah. So, you know, there's. I'm thinking of always... wassail. I'm thinking of like the winter spice and wassail. Oh, uh, right. Holidays are coming right around the corner. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Okay. okay. So there's cherry. So now um, our final change out today from last month, it's our blueberry extract, our blueberry vanilla spice, page 107 of the art of extract making. This is our first change out here. Let me, let me see that. Cause it just looks lovely if I may, cause I'm just so intrigued by it. Wow. I mean, blueberry, uh, I'm, I'm getting more blueberry already than uh, alcohol in that, which is really interesting. So this time, just to show you a different method, we're using a strainer, right? Yeah. Sometimes we, the French press works. Sometimes the strainer works. And then, um, oh, yeah, I'll get that out of your way. We'll free up all those blueberries, get the vanilla out. But um, wow, the amount of... Um, I mean, the amount of extract smell and blueberry smell and cinnamon out of that after just one month. I mean, you you could almost make a case. I mean, there are probably a great many of you that will say, yeah, like, I think I'm ready to use it right now. Like, that uh, smells really good. I mean, we, we know we can get more blueberry out, so we're going to mm -hmm. because we can. The, the math all makes sense. But wow, that is it such. Does. It smells like a cobbler, right? Yes. With the blueberry and the cinnamon and That's vanilla. That's exactly it. Just, it's oh like a goodness. blueberry cobbler. I'm starting to think of those colder days. Yeah. Or even now with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. Yes, indeed. So I'm just picking out the vanilla beans real quick here. So we're running out of time. The vanilla beans and then um, we leave the cinnamon. Uh, the cinnamon goes out. I'm sorry. We yeah, leave we it with it. the blueberries. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so now, now again, that's a preference thing. We, there's a cinnamon taste that's coming through. If you want more cinnamon, you can certainly throw in a fresh stick if you want. And I often do that. I love cinnamon, but I think I might be um, on the side that maybe a little too much. So, um, you know, I know some people don't, they think it can be overpowering and strong. And so um, one stick might be plenty for you. So put the one stick in, do a taste test when you're all finished. And if you think it needs a little bit more, then add a stick at the end. You can do that. Yeah, for sure. So we're leaving ours out to preference. We're pressing the blueberries now with the wrong side of the muddle. It's big. Yeah, oh just because. And um, getting just as much juice out as we can. Again, with the fresh fruit, we should have the eight ounces of fluid. I'm actually looking at the line and you're right at eight ounces right now. And there's still some yep, juice we could get out. Still a little bit. We're, we might be just a tad below. Yeah. Um, it's worth I, it's worth taking time though. Like in, when you've got time in your kitchen, take, take an extra 10, 15 minutes and really try to get the juice out of all the cherries, all the blueberries, whenever you're doing fresh fruit, anything, because you're just getting added sweetness. And so get every amount of juice out of it that you possibly can. We always rush it in these lives just for time, but um, it's important because there's a lot of flavor in those blueberries. Yes, and um, I mean, really, we're almost there. Yeah, I, well, on this side, we're right at, it looks like we're a little above a cup, but no, you're on this outside, yeah. I'm on the cup side. So, um, Normally we would let this kind of, I would push it down. You can also use like a potato masher. Mm. Um, if your strainer is big enough, it, there's a little bit more surface area with the potato masher that you can uh, push more. Um, so that's an option. Yeah. I really like to just see what's in my cupboards and what will work instead of having to go buy something new for every new hobby I have. Cause I like hobbies. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll hold this. I'm gonna sink for now. And then I would love, hopefully, I'm going to pour this out. Did Will you do a close-up? I want to see if you can see the color well, and how wanna, beautiful this we is. We want to put the blueberries in first before okay. we pour the spirit because they'll okay. splash a little bit. Okay, we can do that. So I've just noticed that uh, if you pour the, if you put the, the blueberries in after you put in the spirit, and I've learned this myself, is they splash. Yeah. And then, then I get splash marks on me. So I always oh, put the fruit in first. Bed. Well, I mean, it's a new shirt. But, <laughs> it, but it is blue. So come on. 
Okay. Okay. So we added our four ounces of blueberries, and now we're just going to. I'm hoping that you can see. Isn't that beautiful? It's lovely. So and now we'll need to push the blueberries down. Whoops, I'll take this and just set so this. So push that down. And you know, you can put again a um a fermentation weight on the top, but I usually like to wait because once the fruit has absorbed the alcohol, a lot of times they'll settle down. So, you know, put it together, put it in the cupboard tomorrow, pull it out, check it out, see if you feel like you need to push it down or put a weight or something on it. But oftentimes it's just fine. Uh, Nancy says she loves Jill and you made a very good comment. And Debbie said, oh, she'll use sometimes the bottom of the glass, like to, to press out the beans. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a great idea, Debbie. So I think this is what you're saying is you'll just use the bottom of the glass and use that to just press right the beans into the measuring jar, right? Yeah, and there's quite a bit of surface area on the bottom. Of yeah, it. that's a, so that's another little hack that's kind of fun. Thank you, Debbie. And Debbie would know. Debbie has made a great many, everybody here, Nancy, Roxy. I mean, there's there's a thousand extracts that have been made between some of these people that are commenting. So they know. Yes. <laughs> this is great advice from tried, true, kitchen tested hundreds, maybe a thousand times, yes. right? Yes. How about that? So we're coming up on one hour. We're going to wrap up here pretty quickly. We've got two taste tests, which is our favorite thing in the world to do. It's taste test. Yes. This is where we get to celebrate all of our hard work, right? Yep. Yeah. And so um, we'll be taste testing first the pineapple extract uh, that we started. I can't remember the date and I didn't write it down. In May. We started in May. We've already done the, the change outs. And so it's time to change the pineapple extract out. This is from page 131 mm -hmm. of the Art of Extract Making. And then we'll have one more taste test afterwards and we'll wrap up for the day. We are, we are good. Because <laughs> I'm not talking. Oh my goodness. That's what happens. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this was our pineapple. We call it our pineapple <laughs> paradise. Um, and this was done with dried, freeze-dried pineapple. And so we just used, you know, a 40% um vodka. Mm -hmm. Um and, and so you don't have to worry about this overproof problem when you're using the freeze-dried fruit. The thing about the freeze-dried fruit is that it absorbs a lot of the alcohol at first, and it looks like it's all floating on top. It takes a little bit longer for the alcohol to be absorbed into it. Um, and then also when I used a fermentation weight, you'll see there's one, but it's in the bottom of the, it's at the bottom. And so a lot of it will go over the top. And so... When you use freeze-dried fruit, you kind of have to go in and check on it a little bit more because sometimes, it, you know, you'll get some that's floating and you just need to adjust it again and then go in. And, and, and topping it. topping the the, uh, the extract with the alcohol is common in freeze-dried because particularly like with pineapples, they're thirsty little suckers, right? Yeah. Like they soak up a lot. They're like sponges. It almost kind of looks like applesauce as you're pouring it out. There's mm -hmm. that hidden fermentation weight, right? And so they're super thirsty. It takes a while to get all the fluid to come out. But because we use freeze-dried, it's a super high concentration of pineapple. And so at the end, if you're getting the taste that you like, but you want to get a little more fluid, you can add a little bit more vodka, stir, taste test. If you like it and you're still getting plenty of the pineapple, then you know, you're know you okay. So you can add maybe a tablespoon at a time um, to see if you're getting the flavor profile that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I wanted to show you some of these vanilla beans. Um, this is the our Hawaiian bean. And, you know, these beans are so big and beautiful. But here's one that we tied. And so um, th these are the, one of the ones that we're saving later. So we can open these up and use the caviar for another recipe mm -hmm. uh, for whatever you want to use it for. Um, there are some in here that are cut in half. And, you know, some of that extra, the... Um, you can see it the, dripping you out. You can, like, see it. Dripping. I don't know if we can. Let's see if I can. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can see now, even down here in the extract, yeah. you can see the drops that have fallen. So we stir that in, and now you've got the fun caviar. Yeah. Um, oh, more yeah. vanilla flavor. Do you mind rinsing that out for me? So you know, this will be the telltale sign. How much are we actually going to get um, out of um, 
out of this uh, freeze dried extract. Um, we started with eight ounces. So, you know, let's see uh, what we end up with. Here you go. Muddle over here. Oh, you're muddling. Did you want to put it in the jar or the? Okay. Lots of extracts, lots of cleaning. Uh, the color is pretty and it smells delicious. It's making me think of pineapple upside down cake was my dad's favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no uh, alcohol smell coming through in this one. I mean, it's all pineapple and a little bit of vanilla. Yeah, it's I, I'm not smelling hardly any alcohol. And this is one when you get these broken freeze dried fruit pieces like this, you, you're doing it right. I mean, you just, you know, push it around like that, press it against the screen. There's a whole bunch of extract coming out, which is nice to see on the bottom. Um, this is also one where a coffee filter maybe works and time because uh -huh. um, it'll just be like a steady drip and stream that'll come out over time. So if you have time and you want to go slow, a coffee filter is going to give you the cleanest. Coffee filter will look more like our peach extract. Yes. Right. Whereas um, the strainer is still going to have lots of little pieces of the freeze dried um, um, pineapple yeah. in there. Well, so and there's pros and cons. That, so you're, if you put the beans back in to continue to extract, you're going to have little pieces of um you know pineapple on that as well so it's up to you um how you want to do it if you want it completely um clean and clear coffee filter works wonders mm -hmm. um if you don't mind having a little bit in there um you know you can do uh the strainer and then put the vanilla back into it so for time i'm going to be done now i think i could probably get a little bit more out of here but um let's just see yeah i mean what we have and we have almost eight ounces that almost the full amount but so. we did top this off just a titch because it was um you know in our change out um there wasn't uh we were a little short so we did add just a little bit but if you i mean look a close-up at this this color in here this like amber yellow and then you can see all of um those vanilla specks in there you know oftentimes um people are worried to open up the beans um because they're worried that when they strain it they're going to lose those seeds but there are plenty of seeds in here that go through that fine mesh uh strainer so you're going to be fine if you like the specks yep and and if you have time again like we said we're kind of rushing it i've got the old cherry extract in here and, and we've got like the whole bottom part of the um, uh, measuring cup is now full of, you know, drips. And I've got lots of drips just on my hand here. I'm trying to keep it out of the cherry extract. Oh, so if you have time, you can even get more. There you go. That's but, great. I mean, we're just right below the line of eight ounces. Yeah. So um, I can't wait to uh, taste test this. You ready for this love? I am ready for this love. <laughs> Definitely. Let's see. There's such vanilla nerds. We get excited about the silliest things. I know. We uh, but again, fruit season. Um, th these are just it, it's it's just a whole different spin. I, we call these our summertime extracts, right? Like it's just a whole different thing, and it's fun, and it's light, and it's flavorful, and well, when we I started always get extracting, and we just started with vanilla, and um, you know, and then before we know it, we're adding all kinds of other ingredients. It's such a fun. Uh, yeah, summer times for road, fruit, right? Summer going into fall. And then like we said, I mean, fall and winter, we get back to vanilla and spice and cacao and mocha and tears. But hey, hey, remember everyone, take your time, nose it. Oh, um, <laughs> you can't enjoy it. You gotta nose it. Um, yeah. We'll just get going. Well, I feel the way you feel, and you've already tasted it. I feel that just with the smell. It is like this creamy pineapple vanilla. It is so creamy mm -hmm. and sweet, you guys. Wow. Oh, just my gosh. Add this to your frosting. Uh, oh, my. All your scones. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, you could you could grill with this one, like on your mahi-mahi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, uh, I'm speechless. Wow. <laughs> Re really? I mean, this, this may be the best one of that that we've made. Like, wow, that one turned out just wow. Maybe it's because it's five o'clock and I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because 
it's five o'clock somewhere, <laughs> which is here. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, but that's delicious. Oh it my. So yummy. You know, next time we get together with the group, we're going to have to bring a bunch of finished extracts because we always make them when we're together, but I think we're going to have to bring a finished one somehow so we can do some taste testing together. Because when you're in person, it's fun to make them, but it's even funner to taste them. Yeah, we were right? able to do that on one of our book launches. Yes. We had the oh, Waitress right. Vice and the Mocha. We had everyone taste test. Yes. That was a year ago, yeah. Yeah, so wow. um, that was fun. Mm. Okay, everyone, pineapple vanilla extract, add it to your list. It's a winner. You will not regret it. It's a tried and true. Tried and true. Okay, so the very last taste test of the day, this is our uh, almond extract, page 137 of uh, The Art of Extract Making. We started this one in May. Almond extract is made with bitter apricot kernels. A trick that everyone says, what? And you'll have to watch other videos and read our book and it explains why. So it is time they've been sitting it's time to taste test our almond extract. This was started. almond is like the most controversial of all the extracts because people are like, wait a minute, you're making it with bitter apricot kernels. Why do we even call it almond? Why isn't it called bitter apricot kernel extract? Was one of the questions that was asked. They're like, what, what's the deal? You're calling everybody calls this almond extract, but you make it with bitter apricot kernels. So why isn't it called apricot extract? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> We don't know. I think there, if I'm speculating here, but uh, bitter apricot kernels taste the way we all believe almonds should taste. And yes. isn't that just like us? Yes. We're like, hey, we don't like how you taste almond, but we like saying almond. So we're going to use something totally different. We're just going to call it you. <laughs> That's the reason. I really, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know, right? Because almonds don't taste like almonds. So I guess we know better than Mother Nature. We're saying Mother Nature got this one wrong. We like saying almonds because almonds are popular, I guess. But this is how you make almond extract. And the taste is what you would expect almonds to taste like. That's yes. the point. I mean, that's why we do it. This is It tastes like what you would expect almonds to taste like. Well, and the great thing about um, doing this almond apricot bitter uh, extract is that you can do it any time of year that you're not up against um time with the with the fruit right um you you can do it any time of year and there is some controversy on you know how many change outs do you think is best um i've heard people doing like five change outs because they want it strong <laughs> so um you're gonna have to figure out what's your sweet spot um we think that after this uh, round, it's going to be delicious. Uh, Jeanette Ainsworth actually gave what is, the, I believe, to be the correct answer. And it's very simple that you can't get the bitter almonds in the U.S. to make almond extract. And so we go to the apricot kernels for that reason. And they are very similar. And so I, there are, and we've made almond extract with real almonds. I mean, we, we tried it. We did real almonds and made an almond extract. And it's, it's just a little sour. Right. It just wasn't like what yeah, you it just didn't taste like. Yeah, it was a little yeah, sour. Was... Sour is the only term because you need um, it looks like the the uh, bitter almonds is what Jeanette is saying. And so um, but at her she's elaborating and any stone fruit will have similar flavors. Yeah. And so so that's the point. Um, so there's some science. I'm going to research it a little bit. We'll put it up on the website because I've never like uh, explored that. So Jeanette, thank you um, for that insight. Uh, I think that you're probably uh, right on. So uh, we'll post some information on the website and dig a little deeper on uh, on the story behind almond extract in America and bitter apricot kernels. And if you've made the almond extract, what's your favorite change out? Do you want to do five change outs? Um, how, how do you even describe this? I mean, uh, the level of sweetness and that aroma is um, just overwhelmingly mm -hmm. concentrated. I'm thinking amaretto. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that's thinking... that's exactly it. It's like an amaretto. Like it's a it's an entirely different form of sweetness because there's a little there's like the ice cream. Yeah, there's a tanginess to it. Like the aroma is kind of a sweet tang, which is really fun. Oh, cheers. <laughs> to almonds not being almonds, yeah. <laughs> finding out where almonds are almonds and making sure in the future almonds get their rightful place in extract making history as being almonds. Mm -hmm. I haven't even sipped it yet. 
Wow. Nose it. Breathe in through your mouth as you're nosing. <laughs> the full amount. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, um, it, so, it, it, you know, a lot, it, there's almost like, it's like spicy. It's not vanilla at all. It's kind of a spicy, tangy, zippy um, sweetness that is like nothing else. Isn't it just wonderful? Yeah, and I would say there's a little bit of bitterness to it. Um, but, you know, we haven't added any sugar as if you are when you're baking and whatever you're going to put it in, in, you're probably going to have some sort of sugar in it. But yeah. I would say there, there, when you taste this, you're going to, there is going to be a little bit of bitterness. Um, mm -hmm. but we're keeping the vanilla in here. And so the vanilla will get just stronger over time. This, you know, this has only been in here since um, May. No, I but just, I also, disagree. All inside, I think that you're ready to go. I'm not getting any bitterness. You're not? No, but I am not by nature very bitter. I am, I'm quite sweet. <laughs> and that could be sweet? the reason. <laughs> no, <is> no. No, but seriously, all joking aside, I'm really not getting any, um, I'm not getting any bitterness. Okay. I'm just getting like a, a zippy, tangy um, sweetness, um, maybe tart, but not bitter. That I wouldn't describe it that way. I think it's super sweet. I'm not picking it up, but this is what's so fun about taste tests. And you'll do this with your friends. Every palate is different. We all taste and experience things in an entirely different way, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but I'm not getting the bitterness in this one. I'm just getting like a a, a tangy like zingy sort of sweetness that yeah. really is very fun well, it's definitely ready to mm -hmm. try in your recipe um but it would only get better <laughs> leave the vanilla in there and it will only get better as you're using it um for your recipes nancy just said okay you two time to quit taste testing it's getting to you hey <laughs> <laughs> we have it for the record nancy these are both in my glasses and they I barely just had a sip. So, you know. Mine are empty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, taste testing is so much fun to do. And that's why going back, we'll, we'll finish with where we started. Make extracts with your friends, kind of coordinate it. So you all make something different. And then you have a reason to get together and, and try, you know, four or five different extracts and then compare and contrast see what everyone thinks about them, have fun, and then bake something, you well, know? The first party is the extracting. The next uh -huh. party is the taste testing. And then the next party is that you're bringing everything that you've made um, with your extracts. And you can share, you can, oh, you made this. Well, I'm going to, you know, we're going to divide this up into three or however many um, people you have, and you can share it. And then go make your recipes and have the third party um, and share all of your baked goods. Yep. So Connie, uh, the bitterness and the ability of folks to taste is, is highly different between people. Do you know, we, I did some work um, years ago for the Department of Defense actually, and went to, we were right outside of Baltimore to the laboratory where they do taste testing for food that is going to be sent to soldiers all over the world. So it's gotta be shelf stable. It has to be able to withstand heat and transportation and all these variables. And, and we studied the science of taste testing and the difference of smelling and picking up bitters and sweets and one of the tricks that they taught us there is when we would go from one item to the next, to the next, to the next, to taste test, they had to smell the back of our hand. Because when you smell the back of your hand, it, the, the chemical reaction between the, the skin and the oils on the back of your hand and your nose sort of neutralizes your uh, ability to pick up different things and it, it wipes the slate clean again. And so then when you do your next taste test, it is likely to be more accurate if you've smelled the back of your hand. So there's a little anecdote that was quite interesting, but you're absolutely right, Connie. Everybody, um, and we mentioned this in the book, everybody experiences tastes and smells differently. And so we're always very clear, like when we're describing things, this is how we experience them in our kitchen, but it, it might be different for everyone else, depending on your chemical makeup and the way that you experience those things. But also your culture, um, you know, where you come from and what you're used to tasting um, growing up, um, you're going to be able to tease out different flavors depending on what flavors you know well. And so, um, you know, it's just interesting. And, and that's why we say, um, you know, taste test it. If you think you need more, then there's an option, yeah. right? If you think that you need more um, cinnamon in the, in the blueberry spice, then you can add that cinnamon. 
um, but it may be overpowering to someone. So it's really just a very, um, you know, personal uh, thing, what, how your extracts turn out. Might be bitter, might not be bitter. And that's, and that's why it's fun to do it with friends, because you can compare what you're both experiencing, and you'll be amazed at how you experience two different things. And it's fun. We enjoy. And Connie, Connie Robinson Alexander just said the favorite thing that I love hearing. Yep, you're right, Paul. <laughs> Connie! Connie is my favorite person of this one, but she's she Connie knows quite a bit about um, food and tasting and how it all works. And she's like smelling uh, your hand or your forearm will cancel out previous smells. Isn't that interesting? So fun. So thank you, Connie. You made my day today. Thank you so much, Connie. Well, um, before we wrap up, we want to uh, obviously a big thanks to all of you for uh, hanging out with us. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. We knew we'd go kind of long. We had a big slate today. So thanks for hanging out with us today. We want to give a $25 uh, gift card to Phyllis Payne. Phyllis, uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Send us an email at support at vanillapura.com and we'll make sure we get that uh, gift card emailed over to you right away so you can use it to buy vanilla beans or anything on vanillapura.com. Um, so thanks to all of you. We just, you know, we love seeing all of you uh, when we do these. We've been doing these almost monthly for like four years. And it's just, so, it's it's amazing. We still have things to talk about. Like we haven't run out. There's just more and more things to talk about every time. So we'll be back in a month. If you go to Eventbrite and you look at our uh, profile, you'll see the next um, event is already scheduled in September. I don't have the date right in front of me right now, but we are doing another workshop in September with some new extracts and updates to the ones we just made. So we'll be excited to see all of you in a month. And then we'll be doing, um, you know, as we get into the holiday season and as we go through our whole book and we're making some headway, we're yes, almost there. We're getting close. So thanks so much to all of you for joining us and being in our home on a summertime afternoon. Uh, we appreciate it. We love these. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy extracting. Uh, hang out. If you want to stay and talk, we'll pull up a chair and we'd love to chat with a few of you uh, after we stop the recording here. But have a wonderful day. Happy extracting. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.